Hey guys, Richard Holdman here. Who wants to see even more 4.6 liter two valve intake testing where we run PI intake manifolds on actual PI cylinder heads? Let's take a look. In this video, we're going to take a look at a number of 4.6 liter two valve intake manifolds. And yes, in this video, I promise we'll run them all with PI cylinder heads, both stock and ported version. But in this video, we're going to compare the following intake manifolds. We have the factory PI intake manifold. We have the trick flow intake manifold. We have the Riker racing intake manifold. We have the P51 intake manifold. And of course, we have the super rich double throwdown fabricated dual plenum adjustable intake manifold. So how did they all do? Let's get to the results. So this first test was one I was excited about when this intake manifold was introduced. It was the P51 intake manifold. So it was introduced with lots of hoopla and I thought, okay, great, this is gonna be awesome. Somebody finally stepped up and made a, a cast aluminum intake manifold that's gonna be better than the PI intake manifold. Um, unfortunately, that's not exactly what happened. At least it didn't show that in this test. So our test combination was a 4.6 liter two valve. It had the, uh, it came, again, this came from Sean Highland. It had um, stock heads on it. It had a 262 camshaft, the Extreme Energy 262H. So it had, um, this one was slightly lower compression than the stock. It did have forged internals in it, although it didn't need it for the test that we were doing. Uh, we did a bunch of testing on this combination uh, later on by adjusting the cams and stuff and finding out if the different sides were even and all kinds of stuff. So it was, this was a, we did days worth of testing on this. This is pretty cool, but this is a back-to-back -back test we ran on the PI intake manifold versus the P51 intake manifold. So here's our combination with long tube headers. Now the PI intake manifold was fit with an AccuFab elbow and AccuFab throttle body and run in that configuration. Our test motor produced 345 horsepower and 351 foot-pounds of torque with the PI intake manifold. And here's what happened when we installed the P51 intake manifold. As you can see, I'll show you some photos here of the inside. It looks like it's got radius entries. The runners are obviously shorter. And I was kind of expecting, you know, a similar thing to what we saw with the Reichert Racing and other manifolds where we gain power at the top and pick up and lose power at the bottom. But all we did here on this combination was we didn't see any crossover until after 6,000 RPM, and even then, both of these were kind of on their way down in terms of the power peak. So on this particular combination, this P51 intake manifold didn't do as well as I expected. I thought it was going to do much better. If any of you guys out there will let me know in the comments have ever run one of these on any kind of combination and actually done a test back to back. Like I don't just want to know, oh yeah, we ran it on our supercharged two valve and it worked great. Well, that's fantastic. But as you can see, you wouldn't really be able to tell the difference whether it did great or not compared to this manifold and the PI manifold, judging by the power numbers here. So if anybody else has ever tested this versus something else, let me know in the comments because, I, as I said, I kind of expected it to do better. Um, and again, maybe like with some of the other tests, we needed more motor to go with this, but this is not really showing that, So, which is I thought was very strange. But this is our test on the P50, P51 versus the PI manifold. So now let's take a look at some of the other tests. This test comparing the PI intake manifold to the trick flow intake manifold was run on a rather mild combination. This particular test motor came from the guys at Sean Highland, and it was basically a 462 valve with forged internals, although with the dish piston that was in it, the compression was lower than stock. This combination had a set of uh, two valve heads on it that had just been received, you know, a valve job and that kind of stuff. It did have a spring upgrade to go with the cam that we run. We ran the Extreme Energy XE270 AH cam, so middle of the road, call that a stage two two valve cam for the PI heads. We ran a PI intake manifold with an AccuFab throttle body. We had long tube headers. We had a fast XFI management system. The thing was optimized. It had an electric water pump. So everything that could be done, uh, you know, the way that we normally run this thing. So run with the PI intake manifold and AccuFab throttle body. This combination produced 348 horsepower and 349 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened after we installed the trick flow intake manifold. And as you should come to expect when we do intake manifold tests, <laughs> certainly if you looked at part one of this video and, and now at part two of some of the other stuff, you can see that we've run, anytime we run an intake manifold with a shorter runner length, 
we always have some kind of trade-off, and that's exactly what happened here. The trick flow intake can certainly support a lot more power than the factory PI intake manifold, but because of the runner length, it's going to want to do that at a different RPM range. So you can see it lost power through a lot of the curve up to a little over 5,000 RPM and then pulled ahead. And the reality is, just like in the test we'll show you on the Rikert Racing intake manifold, um, and in even in part one of the first part of this video, on the Ford Racing Bullet intake manifold, we didn't have really enough test motor to take advantage of what this trick flow intake manifold had to offer. This thing was fairly mild. This thing needed to be up over 400 horsepower to really start taking advantage of what the trick flow manifold had to offer. And even then, we would want to be making power at a higher RPM with that manifold compared to the PI intake manifold. So don't think if you have a stock or even very mild uh, two valve PI combination that putting one of these short runner intake manifolds is going to help you a lot because you can see through a lot of the curve that's not the case. Um, you'll want to combine this kind of manifold or any of these short runner manifolds with the right camshaft, ported heads will go a long way and all of that stuff is going to put push power to a much higher RPM range where you're going to make lots more power. Our final test was run on a stroker version of a 462 valve. This was actually a 5 liter version, and it was a fairly healthy one. It had a lot of good parts in it. We'll take a look at the test description here. It was a uh, about 11, a little over 11 to 1 compression with forged internals. It had a set of TEA ported uh PI heads on it, so good ported PI heads. It had some fairly big camshafts in it, Extreme Energy 278 AHs, which were basically the biggest PI head that Comp had back then in the catalog. Um, we ran it with long tube headers and no mufflers, just collector extensions. We ran it with an XFI management system. So this was a fairly stout piece and with a lot of flow potential. So this would really show what these intake manifolds would do. So the first thing we did obviously was run this with a PI intake manifold, uh, an AccuFab elbow and throttle body, and obviously no inlet system. And like we always do, we ran it with a Mazira electric water pump and an optimized timing and it was colder. So uh, here are the power outputs of the different manifolds. With the PI manifold, this combination made 411 horsepower and 407 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened after we added the uh, Rikert Racing intake manifold. And this was a short runner fabricated intake manifold. So it would be much better for a higher RPM application as we'll see. And we've come to expect uh, this kind of thing when we run short runner manifolds. As you can see, the short runner manifold um, lost power basically everywhere compared to the longer runner PI manifold. And in this RPM range, that's not surprising. If you were wanting to run a uh, two valve motor out to 7,500 or something, then a shorter runner manifold would could definitely come into play. But in this RPM range, it's really, really hard to beat something with the kind of runner length that a stock PI manifold has. I think that there is a, a sweet spot in between these two. Um, which we found out because I made <laughs> I made an adjustable manifold. But there are other changes too. When I put this, um, here's what happened when I put this dual runner intake or the dual plenum intake manifold. Then I made the the intake manifold adjustable in terms of uh, runner length so that I could just do slip fits and adjust the manifold and find out where the thing wanted to run. So as you can see, this manifold had about, I think these were 10 or 11 inch runners on this one. Yeah, it says 11 inch runners and it had a dual 75 millimeter throttle bodies, one for each of the plenums. And we played a lot with connecting the plenums and unconnecting the plenums and putting radius entries and inlet tubes and all kinds of stuff on this. It was kind of cool, but run with that manifold. Um, and I think that the best thing here is to compare it to one of these manifolds at a time. So let's take a look at, um, this is versus the PI manifold. So the custom dual plenum Super Ritchie manifold made 444 horsepower. Peak torque was 399 foot-pounds. And as you can see, it was down on torque through most of the curve. Uh, it matched the PI manifold at about 42 or 4300 and then dipped down below again. Um, so it lost torque through most of the RPM range compared to the PI manifold as we as happens with short runner stuff. But from 5,500 on out, it certainly made a lot more power. So again, just like we've seen in the others, if you want more power at the top, 
it usually requires you to trade power somewhere else. And that's exactly what happened on this particular combination. So this was kind of an in-between uh, intake manifold between the Reichert Racing deal and between the PI manifold. But again, this is what you have. It's all about a trade-off. Okay, guys, what do we learn in this second video on 4.6 liter two valve intake testing? Well, I think we learned the following thing. Obviously, there are lots of different intakes for these combinations, and there are even more than I haven't tested yet. For instance, the Edelbrock stuff. A lot of guys want to see the Victor Jr. or Super Victor or whatever they're called. I do want to run that, but here's an important thing. If you take a look at intake manifolds, intake manifolds are RPM specific. They want to run, they're optimized to make power in a given RPM range. We saw that on some of the short runner stuff. It wants to make power higher in the RPM range than the long runner stuff. So all of the factory stuff was really designed to optimize power production in the RPM range that Ford designed that whole motor for, including the cylinder heads and the camshaft. Obviously, they want, like with the truck manifold that we did in the first video, they want even lower on that combination. The PI intake was designed to optimize power a little bit higher than that, but none of them were designed to optimize power way up top where we would run with ported heads and bigger cams. So remember, choose the intake manifold to run in the RPM range that you want. And yes, that includes even when you run boost, because I know that that's going to be a next question. Now that you've run all these intake manifolds, you need to run them under boost. And guess what? They'll do exactly the same thing. Armature holder guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. And I will keep testing.